it was perfect to finish cooking and cooking. They brought lotus leaves in bundles and placed them in front of the soldiers. Then they brought pongal and curry and served it. After the soldiers had begun to eat, the prince crawled among them, interrogating them. He stopped there and inquired about the health of the soldiers. Those who were thus inquired, plunged into the ocean of bliss. Bystanders applauded their luck. All the Chola warriors already had a lot of admiration for Ilongo. Lately that admiration had multiplied manifold. They knew that the prince had taken great pains to bring them food from the mother country. Also, the prince mingled with the ordinary warriors on an equal footing, inquired about their welfare and encouraged them. This trait made the prince look like an eye-to-eye -eye for them. Therefore, the soldiers tried to stop the prince there. They muster the courage to ask him any question. Essentially, the question many of them asked was, when will the invasion of the city be? That is. In answer to this question, the prince said, what is the use of invading the city of Pulataya? Has Mahinda gone to Rahana? He told some people. Wait a little while and let the rainy season pass, he said to some others. Some players have expressed their displeasure at being zombies without combat. Others said, we are patient if you come and see us like this at least once a month. After the court hearing was over, the prince retired to his own barracks. He took Van Dye the Van and Alvar Kadian with him. Didn't you see the enthusiasm of these soldiers? If only Tanjore had given proper cooperation, we would have had the whole island of Ceylon in our possession by now. A great opportunity has been wasted. We cannot fight here in the rainy season. Our soldiers will have to be idle for another three or four months. He said that. Hearing this, Tyrimala said, Prince. It is surprising that you are worried about this. The Chola Empire itself has suffered a disaster. The kingdom established by Vijayalaya Chola, the great kingdom that was flourished by Paranthakar and Sundara Chola, seems to be shrinking due to internal dangers. He said. Yes, yes. You too have brought important news. I am venting my petty concern. Good, now tell me all you have to say in detail. Let this one begin first. Said the prince pointing to Van the Van. Van Van immediately started his story. He told everything he had seen and heard since he left Kanji. While pretending not to elaborate too much on the heroic deeds he had performed to escape from many perils, he at the same time published his praises. At last he said, Sir. They keep their dear father in prison. The close balls, the high officials, and the petty princes are conspiring together in a terrible conspiracy. All this has their sister the younger bratty in great trouble. So you must set out at once and come with me to old Ere. Don't delay a moment. He concluded. Then all were Katayan narrated her history. He also approved everything that Van Dye the Van said. He also told about the midnight conspiracy of the murderers near Tirupuram Piyam police force. He reiterated the message sent by the first minister that the situation in Chola Nadu was so dangerous that the prince should not come there at the moment. Not only are they not coming to the Chola country at present, but the first minister requests that they do not extend the invasion further here. He also requests that all the forces be collected and concentrated in northern Ceylon. The conspirators will soon come out and show their true colors. The first minister is of the opinion that the forces in Ceylon will be of use now. In the present country of Pandya, the Kaikalar force, the Vaniyar force, and the Velalar force are all waiting to sacrifice body and soul for the prince. The Prime Minister has ordered me to inform them of this too. All were Kadians said. Thirumalai. What is your Guru Nath thinking? Does he consider himself a Chanakya in love like the Chanakya of Padala Purat? Does he want me to fight with my cousin? Asked the Prince angrily. No. Sir. Anuradha did not say that. But he says that those who conspire against the Emperor, those who have begun to betray the empire, should be punished in due course. Isn't it their duty to help them? Said Thirumalai. How can I be an officer of that? If the conspiracy is real, 
isn't it the emperor who should take appropriate action? How can I enter into this matter without my father's orders? said the prince. Vandiyathevan now interrupted and said, Prince. Their father is not healthy now. The Palyavetareus are keeping him as a prisoner. They are keeping him inside the palace so that no one can approach him. He is fasting and not coming to Tanjore. In this situation, is it not their responsibility to protect the empire? Is it not their duty to come to the old palace immediately? He said. What is the need for the prince to come to old Ere? That is what I do not know. All Workadians said. The prince thought for a while and said, The mind is very wicked. What terrible sins have been committed in this world because of the desire for kingdom? I went to the fort of Simagari today, didn't I? Do you know the history of that fort? Said. I have never heard, said Vandiyathevan. Finally, one day Magellan came to his aid with the army of the Pandya king. Approached the fort of Simagrike. At that time, Kajiapan's intellect was broken. He who had been hiding in the fort for all these years came out with amazing courage and died fighting. Built by the said Badakan, the sinner who killed his father, the fort has some wonderful paintings. I saw it today when I went with the Chinese pilgrims. Damn! What is the beauty of those images? Written hundreds of years ago. But even today they look like brand new paintings with no color fading. He who had been hiding in the fort for all these years came out with amazing courage and died fighting. Built by the said Badakan, the sinner who killed his father, the fort has some wonderful paintings. I saw it today when I went with the Chinese pilgrims. Damn! What is the beauty of those images? Written hundreds of years ago. But even today they look like brand new paintings with no color fading. He who had been hiding in the fort for all these years came out with amazing courage and died fighting. Built by the said Badakan, the sinner who killed his father, the fort has some wonderful paintings. I saw it today when I went with the Chinese pilgrims. Damn! What is the beauty of those images? Written hundreds of years ago. But even today they look like brand new paintings with no color fading. Sir! May I ask a question? All Workadians said. Why the hesitation? Feel free to ask. Simagari Fort is still in the hands of enemy forces. Yes, I have no intention of attempting to capture it now. It would result in wasted lives. I did not hear about that. Sir. I asked if it was right for them to enter the enemy's fort. What happened to the Chinese pilgrims that they had to go as elephants? When I saw them on the elephant's neck, I doubted whether to believe my eyes or not. I was convinced by the frown of their eyebrows. Can we risk our lives? Is my life so high, Thirumalai? How many Chola soldiers have come and died in this Sri Lanka? They gave up their lives on the battlefield. You put yourself in danger unnecessarily. It's not unnecessary, there are two reasons. I had a desire to see the Simagari paintings for a long time. I fulfilled that desire today. Prince. Another reason. As soon as Parthibap Palavar came down from the Trigana Hill, I got the news. I don't want to see him today. Because. Because. I also know that the First Minister has come to Madatam. I was expecting a message from him. If I get a message from two seniors, should I go by the first message I get? Vandiyathevan said, Oh! Tell me, my party won by itself! He exclaimed. O oh King! He has deceived them by trickery. He did not deceive, I myself was deceived. I noticed that he had thrown the warrior who was to bring you from his horse and mounted on the mare himself. I wanted to teach him a lesson. You have taught a good lesson. Every lesson is full of lessons. My back and chest ache just thinking about it now. Is this the way to treat the messenger who brought the straw? Let them go, if only they would come with me to the old room. I remember an old song. Tyrumala. Among my forefathers there was a king named Paranjali Valavan. He had a wonderful elephant. One of its feet would be in Kanchi, 
the other foot would trample Tanjore, the other foot would trample this country and the fourth foot would rest in very Ewer. A poet has sung with wonderful imagination. There are thousands of elephants in Sri Lanka. What's the use? If I had an elephant like the poet's imaginary elephant, wouldn't I be in Kanchi, Old Are, Madurai and Sri Lanka at the same time? Vandiyathevan and Alvarkadian fell down laughing when they heard about the elephant of Bulavar. Such an elephant, isn't it? What are you going to do? Asked Tirumala. What's the doubt? Has it been decided to come to Old Are? Vandiyathevan said. Stop your fighting for a while. Tomorrow we will go to Anuradhapuram. I must meet Parthiba Palavar there anyway. We must decide after hearing what he has to say, said the prince.